Uh, it's been interesting to kind of see the automotive, automotive industry embrace uh, open source over the last uh, few years. Uh, so I'm excited to see what Daimler has to say today. But I'd like to introduce you to uh, Vlado and R Ronald from uh, Daimler to talk about uh, it's Ready for the Future Mobility. It's the name of your talk. So go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, thank you also for already now for your listening. Um, just ready for future mobility. What we would like to share um, is to give you some insights on what we are currently working and what our vision for future mobility is. And of course then to dig a little bit deeper to what challenges we also see and where we also see potential um, yeah, needs for more free open source software to solve that issue for the world in that case. Yeah. So and before we start and dig a little bit deeper, Just brief introduction of myself. That's already said. Yeah, my name is Vlado. I'm heading the so-called Case IT department. Yeah, Case is an acronym. Uh, Roland will express a little bit more in detail later on. Um, what we're trying to do there in that division is try to cover the future mobility of the company, and to start also heading and leading the transformation from a classical car manufacturer, so making out of steel a great product, trying to become a more mobility solution provider in the future. Yeah? And this is of course a huge transformation and we are trying to carry that out. Yeah, and my name is uh, Ron Grassman. I work for the Mercedes-Benz uh, Vans division. We are uh, building the transporters that you might know from the roads, the Sprinter, the Vito and other product. And uh, we are actively embracing electrification. We are in the process of electrifying our fleet. My task is not to build the electric transporter but to develop, develop an ecosystem of services around these transporters. So digital solutions, uh, solutions for charging, for energy management, and things that we will talk about later. And uh, yeah, so we're in the middle of this, of, this, um, of this development process. So I will later give you a little insight. But now let's kick off with uh, Vlado. Thanks, Roman. And now starting in what we prepared for you is, um, just um, looking from a customer point of view, and it's of course for a car manufacturer and very important, uh, point may be the most important thing you should have in mind coming from customer points of view. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not, uh, not such a huge uh, secret, yeah, but this um, unending struggle to keep the car and the usage and the user experience of a car as easy as you are know it by your uh, smartphone is of course a challenge for us. Yeah? And um, what we created out of that is uh, two major brand values that we are constantly working on. And the first thing um, I would like um, to give you some insight is our approach in ease. Yeah? So if you have to tackle and to make the car as easy as your phone, then ease should be, of course, a guiding principle in that game. And um, uh, what you can see here are two versions of the next user experience we are trying to provide into the car. Here on the left-hand side, you see the A-Class that will be released soon and there is incorporated and built in the new infotainment system called MBUX. Yeah, there's a lot of GPU power in that case and Jonas showed in the kickoff already a video where people already start to talk to that so the voice recognition massively improved and based on the already available GPU power and somebody make a nice uh, fun joke yesterday at Worm took he, sa he said already hey there's so much GPU power and it's more or less a mining machine on wheels. Yeah? Um, what's maybe pretty true in that case. What you see on the left-hand side, so on that picture, so this is a passenger car. Here on the right-hand side, you see a commercial vehicle. So um, it's a van, but we, of course, what our customers use also for commercial, for commercial purposes in that case, like uh, parcel shipping and stuff like that. So it's not, of course, the same user experience you have there, but it's more oriented also to make the work life easier for guys who are utilizing um, that cars. Yeah? And um, the major goal there is always to reduce the complexity to the most simplest and most easiest um, usage in that case. And it should, of course, be an effortless and pleasant experience um, in, that, uh, in that case also. So the next thing, and that's for me also a first connection I see also with uh, FOSS in that <coughs> case, is uh, trust. So you have to be for your customer, of course, a trustful partner, and trust is, from my point of view, also a very, very basic um, thing. You have to take care also in collaborations. So if you have no trust in each other, then things like free open source software would also not work out in that case. And coming from a customer point of view and our commercial view on that, 
We have, of course, to take care for the trust in our products, in our brand. And for that reason, these two things, uh, ease and trust, are, are very important in that case for us. So we have to bring that much more and much better together. Um, and to give you a view now for the future things we have on our roadmap and what we would like to deploy within the next years is, I would like to show you... So what did you try to, uh, to show there was you saw an autonomous car, of course. We call it robot taxi. It's a service that will be deployed by the beginning of the 2020s, so around 2021. Um, and now coming back to that, um, to that brand value, so we said, OK, ease is important. Of course, you need to utilize that kind of service in a very easy way. And of course, you have to keep still track on the trust point of view because these autonomous cars are not allowed to make any big trouble or any big issues because you have to keep very, very clear on that and uh, to keep it safe yeah? and to, ra to rely on the trust uh, part of that, of that, um, of that service. Um, and um, I, I think I also maybe would also like to mention that autonomous driving is, of course, uh, a huge topic for all automotive uh, car manufacturers outside there. And this is, of course, also a very, very talent-attracting uh, job that you can solve there, yeah? Because it's a hot topic, yeah? Everybody would like um, to dig deeper there, would like to get it done somehow. Um, and it's also, of course, an absolutely high-tech approach um, to get autonomous driving solved. Yeah. And now, don't. Okay, so thanks, Vlado. So what you can see is that we are moving ahead in this direction, electrified, shared, autonomous, and um, also connected. And this vehicle that you see here is the F-015, a vehicle that we showed um, a little while ago in Las Vegas. Uh, it's, it's basically look, uh, giving that outlook into those, uh, the robo-taxi world, uh, basically a, 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 um, a, a hub of connectivity and safety on the road where you can relax and lounge and uh, go ahead in an autonomous vehicle. But the passenger car side is, of course, not the only division where we do that. Uh, that's the only wrong direction, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So here you can see our Mercedes-Benz Vision Van. So also on the commercial vehicle side, we're moving in that direction. You can see here the vehicle that we, we showed at the last commercial vehicle um, show in, in Frankfurt. And it's a vehicle that is also fully connected. It has an electric drivetrain. It has uh, those uh, drones that you see on the roof. So this is, of course, a future outlook, how vehicles uh, in the commercial vehicle uh, domain can look like. But the, the thought really is here that um, 
uh, the, we know that the markets are changing very fast, the business models are changing, so we have to prepare also for the future uh, in, in commercial transport. And this is also true, of course, for passenger transport. So, um, and this is one of the reasons why we formed this entity, a CASE. CASE is um, standing for Connected, Autonomous, Shared and Services and Electrified. And uh, Vlado is heading the IT part of CASE. Um, this division is actually preparing our future. So with Connected, we enable a whole uh, new world of uh, digital services around our vehicles. Autonomous, uh, that's obvious. We, we want to bring autonomous vehicles on the road because we see it as a, an additional layer of uh, comfort and also safety. And we believe that the technology must be right before bringing fully autonomous vehicles on the road. So it's uh, very important that we, uh, right now, we, we, we are able to assist the driver, but fully autonomous vehicles will, uh, from our point of view, hit the road when they are really ready for it. Uh, this is going very fast, but we're not quite there yet. Shared in services, uh, we are, uh, you know, on the world market, of course, very active here. We are we have with, uh, with Car2Go and with Movil, um, we have um, very, um, very in interesting offers there. But we're also moving forward uh, into the sharing domain with, for example, our cooperation with, uh, with VIA, where we do ride sharing and ride pooling services. And last but not least, um, electrification is, of course, a mega trend. And uh, we are fully embracing that. And I think uh, this picture will show you that we are really serious about this from our smallest vehicle to our largest vehicle, we are electrifying our fleet. You can see the Smart, you can see the EQC, which is bound for the markets in 2019. And uh, we have the Vision Van that I just showed you. The new electric uh, Sprinter is uh, coming out uh, next year. We have electric buses and we have the, even the electric heavy duty trucks, the Actros. Um, so, so far so good. So we have uh, ease and trust, um, obviously on the vehicle side, but let's have a look at the, um, at the charging side. So this is of course one of the key features for our electric vehicles is how do you actually charge those vehicles? We want to come to the same user experience. We want our customers to be happy about it. When we're talking with customers about electrified vehicles, the, the first question after the, what's the price and the range is, um, how do I actually charge those vehicles? And especially if I'm talking about a larger fleet of uh, vehicles. But um, right now we're, we're, we're not there. We have managed to standardize the, the plug, the physical layer. We have also managed to come up with communication protocols. Where we really at the moment are struggling, and that's why we're here also, is that the, the software that, that we need actually to make this really a good customer experience is not really there yet. So we have, the, we have a communication channel. What we need now is the right software stack, so to speak, modules that we can use. And this is where we think uh, open source comes into play. So we really hope that the community finds this topic interesting because we're really working um, towards uh, bringing that uh, into the Daimler world, and we hope that you can also help us here. Yeah? And if I may uh, go a little bit deeper into that topic, um, with my team, I'm right now working on the topic of charging fleets. So we, we have, a, um, with our electrification strategy, we have the product coming, and uh, when we talk to customers, we saw, okay, we, um, uh, the customer uh, we are facing, they want to operate a large number of vehicles from a depot. Um, and in this depot, um, they need to build their own charging infrastructure. You cannot put out uh, 100 delivery vans around uh, such a depot and let them charge in the public. Yeah? If there is a city that's building up um, public charging infrastructure with taxpayers' money, they don't want these charging positions then taken by delivery vans. So we're trying to uh, build this. But what we're seeing is that there is a, a real big challenge in managing the net load. Yeah? So if you see the vehicles, if they would come in and simply, um, the moment they get plugged in, starting to charge, you can very fast get very undesired loads on the grid. Yeah? So the, the topic here is how do you intelligently manage this, this load, um, this, this electrical load on the grid? And you can see that um, by, by managing here, and excuse me that it's in German, you, you can, um, by looking at the time the vehicles are standing in the depot, you can, you can split those charging windows among the div uh, individual vehicles and make sure that you never exceed a certain load point, which is costly, but also um, potentially not in a safe condition. Yeah. And the second picture uh, to the right here, that is um, also a new topic for us, managing infrastructure. So far, um, a, a fleet manager, um, uh, one of our customers, he's looking very closely at his vehicles. So how do you um, control the delivery tasks? How do you make certain that your vehicles um, run the right times and uh, can do all their the tasks that they are, uh, have been given. 
but now there comes a new asset into the play. There's one is the vehicle, and the second is um, the individual infrastructure that we build there. So if I, um, my task is to deliver packages uh, with my 20 or 30 vehicles, I need to make certain that the vehicles are ready to run every morning and fully charged. So we're looking at uh, intelligent ways also how to manage this infrastructure. And that goes even further. Um, with the electric vehicle, we have uh, one big advantage that we can um, um, bring it to the right operating temperature, the, the cabin, but also the drivetrain, while it's connected to the to the, um, the electric plug. So especially in summer when it's very hot, we can use the AC, or in winter when it's really cold, we can heat up the vehicle while it's connected to the grid. So we can do pre -con what we call preconditioning, and that's something that we can control via software that the fleet manager has. And I think here that that's one use case where we hope that uh, together with this community, we can maybe develop tools that can serve um, the, the whole automotive industry, because every manu manufacturer faces the same challenges. All right, so uh, gave you a little insight now in our fleet charging operations. And I think with that, I will hand back uh, to Vlado, who will go a bit deeper <coughs> into a domain of billing and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it was, yet, uh, was uh, quite obvious. So, so charging is an issue in that, um, in that story of making electric cars or electric mobility um, available there. So and this is just now a picture where we say, um, or where we also see potentials um, and issues that maybe could become um, also a part of free open source uh, solutions. Why? Um, what, what we observe today is that customers, and as already mentioned by, by Roland, are searching of course for end-to-end -end solutions. So they're buying an electric car and they're expecting also that charging is not becoming an issue. But if you're now looking at your, maybe your personal situation here, um, would you be really ready to charge your car in your specific driving behaviors. Yeah? Have you the opportunity to have a charging station at your home place, at your garage? The question is, have you a garage where to put it in? Have you public charging infra infrastructure available uh, closely into your area or your location? Or have you the possibility to charge your car at your workplace? Yeah? All open questions, uh, and maybe some of you would say, hmm, it's not really fitting to my uh, personal situation. And if that not fits to your personal situation, the danger is quite there that you would not decide to take an electric vehicle. Yeah? So how to solve that and how to deal with that stuff is so customers and um, infrastructure providers have to be have to become much closer um, together in that case and we have also of course to collaborate with charging <coughs> infrastructure providers in a much smarter way than they usually do so. Um, so there are guys that are building up charging infrastructure and there's our customers who are going to use that. And why is that a free open source software issue? Um, because we pretty still believe that this is not just a problem and issue for Daimler. We are pretty sure there's a problem for all car manufacturers and for all infrastructure providers at the same time. Because what we're recognizing by implementing that kind of solutions now is <laughs> we're just decoupling our internal Daimler complexity to make the entrance for the charging infrastructure providers much easier to our, uh, to our solutions and to the services we would like to offer to the customers. And the same happens with all other car manufacturers at the same time. So from my point of view, we are producing a lot of waste there because we are developing commodities in that case, where a standard would be much more uh, helpful and um, further developing also that market. And so we strongly believe, or the, the, our thoughts um, running much more into that direction, how to go into define such kind of a standard by not um, doing the same thing that we did maybe with the last 130 years as car manufacturers, because what we're usually doing if you go into define a standard, we're just starting to call our colleagues, uh, BMW, Toyota, whatever, yeah, putting them in a huge room and then starting to develop that thing. Due to the um, development cycles we see here, um, that would maybe be far too slow to find the right set of solutions and of digital products who should cover that. So basic idea is, again, searching for some alternative, uh, uh, for some other different approaches and <coughs> still having a free open source uh, in, in our mind there. Because it's not just a car manufacturer issue, it's also an issue for, for entire states, yeah? for specific cities, for the infrastructure providers who are, um, who are going um, to provide that capabilities, energy providing um, to, to mobility services. And the basic questions, of course, um, we have in mind are the following, and that's a 
more or less a question, and maybe we can also use a little bit of time for a short dialogue in that case. So the question we have in mind is how can we become now a fruitful part of the um, FOSS community in that case to at least solve or to master the challenge of um, today's electric vehicle charging. And if you remember back um, the robot taxi video we showed you, yeah? I mean, the bigger vision is how to enable that autonomous driving car to get their energy by itself. Yeah? Because if you have the capability of autonomous driving in that case, um, car would decide by its own to approach a charging station to take the right energy and then drive to you back. Yeah? But in that use case, you need even much more automatization, much more standards, um, and that should also fit perfectly in that case. Yeah? So that would be um, our input. And now happy to maybe get some questions from your side or to start at least in, for a couple of minutes some short dialogue in that case. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Any questions, Duke? Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> you have the to run. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious to know, like, you're using, you're planning on using FOSS for software development. Do you anticipate, like, open source principles extending over to the hardware side um, as far as, like, standardization of charging um, stations across the different manufacturers and the infrastructure because right now we seem to have a little bit of a silo effect between manufacturers as far as things like just regular charging so I'm wondering if you have any notion of whether or not this principle will extend to the hardware side um, I think pretty pretty good question in that case so just my personal opinion on that yeah so free open source software to start a little bit earlier in the process is used at OEMs worldwide. So everybody is reutilizing that for its own processes and services. But it's quite uncommon to contribute yeah, <coughs> and to contribute back um, for OEMs. So my first challenge is enable our company and enable the other OEMs to start doing proactively development in that area. Yeah? to start for in that uh, specific approach, building up a standard, software-based, yeah? no hardware so far in, in my mind. Down the road, you are absolutely right, I think. Yeah? So if you're getting also this mindset into the companies and that they also start to understand how powerful that can be, then of course you can extend that also on the hardware side. And I think if we would found now, um, if we would try now to build up community, you would anyhow to do also to, to have an, a reference hardware kit because testing uh, charging solutions at your home would maybe not be the easiest thing. Yeah? So you need at least some, some small Raspberry Pi uh, and some plug that you can somehow cover and check maybe on your smartphone yeah, if it's really working or not in that case. Yeah? But that would not be the first intention. But if I understood right, the question was also, is there a hardware standard already now? The charging, there, 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 is, there are several standards worldwide. And it took us many years to standardize these interfaces and honestly, it's not a global standard, yeah, which, which sort of sucks. Yeah, sorry for, for saying that. But, but uh, nevertheless, at least um, uh, throughout Europe, throughout the United States, and um, um, uh, at least uh, throughout uh, China, we have standards. So there is a physical layer that's standardized. And also there's a communication channel that's standardized. What is missing is the, the layers on top of that, actually. So there is already now an environment in charging where uh, FOSS can be, could be used, yeah, and the standards are open. Yeah or they, they are open, uh, visible, yeah, they, and, and so we really think there's a great opportunity to use that. Even now, you don't need, need to wait for a couple of years. Awesome. I think we have a question here. Hi. Uh, thanks for the chat. Um, in, in your previous slides, you were talking about how um, you guys want to uh, electrify all your vehicles. Uh, the question is, what are you guys doing on the production side to not be in the same state as Tesla, which is having massive production mm -hmm. issues, especially with your taxi vision? Yeah. So, <laughs> no doubts about Tesla. Yeah, so I would not answer on that, of course. Um, I mean, there's a, so uh, when I started, I said, okay, we are somehow struggling to have the same experience in the car. What Tesla is doing, excellent. So they are quite close to that. They have different design principles. Uh, what we are good in is producing that stuff. Yeah, so we are enabled by today, and that's what we're preparing, 
to produce on the same production line different products. Yeah? And these products and electrified products will come out of the same factory mm -hmm. and they will come out of the same production lines. Yeah? And so, to be honest, we are not uh, facing, or I, I don't believe that we will face the same issues that these guys have um, out of their point of view, yeah? because we are pretty good usually in that. So I think, I think you're, you're, you're absolutely right that in, in that you guys have expertise in production, which I think obviously has been proven by, by the years of, of existence. Uh, the, one of the biggest problems that I have as a car consumer is that car manufacturers, and sorry to say this, are just really bad when it comes to UI and UX. Absolutely. Right, you see navigation systems that are produced by car manufacturers, I'd rather just crash my car and walk, because they're terrible. Yeah. But then t the, the likes of Tesla, which are like software companies, are very good at that. Uh, how are you guys bridging that gap? Because it's a pretty big one, right? To go from being a very hardware manufacturer company to now going to the software side. What are you guys doing to, to bridge that one? Yeah, that's what we, what we also initially tried to say. Yeah? So recognized by ourselves also, of course, in that case. And what we're now doing is producing a new, so, uh, so producing a new generation of user experience into the cars. Yeah? So deploying also much more flat screens, yeah? much more digitalized elements. Uh, so we are going also to lose physical, um, physical um, buttons in the car. Yeah? So it will be much more digitized in that way. And we're also increasing heavily the GPU power in the cars. It's, of course, also a prerequisite for autonomous driving, so we're preparing already for that. Yeah? But that new GPU or CPU power in the car and um, what we're building in is, of course, enabling also a different uh, user experience in that case. Yeah? What we do in the second hand is also, I mean, I'm part of the automotive great Linux um, uh, advisory board in that case, and we're also now trying there to bring core components into the car and to decouple hardware from software because this is the biggest challenge on the OEM side. Their, build, their building blocks always are end-to-end -end stacks, hardware and software, and they're not decoupled. So if you have to do an update, you can't do it really because it's uh, too complicated in that case. Yeah? So we're starting also to decouple that and to become much more in that direction, to be much more reactive and to fulfill that user experiences um, that you have, of course, in mind. Thanks. Yeah, one final question. Please. Sorry, maybe I'm being greedy. I have two questions, actually. Um, we, we all know that some cities have power grid problems, so then your penetration rate will not be very high. So how do you position yourself? That's the first question. Uh, quick, very quickly, second question. Um, we know Amazon started out doing what they did, and now they started doing more things. Uh, would Mercedes be doing something like that, or Daimler would, would move from being a car manufacturer to uh, a lifestyle provider, perhaps, yeah. if I can say that. So I think I will answer for the first question um, on, the, uh, the, on the, the energy management, and also a part of the second question for Mercedes-Benz Vans, and maybe Lado can add for the passenger car division. So regarding energy management, you're totally right. It's, it's really an issue, especially if you want to deploy large fleets. So um, we noticed now um, we're, we're cooperating with a company who has ordered 1,500 electric vans from us, and they want to electrify these depots that I just showed. So the, sometimes there's 30, 50, or even 100 vehicles in one of those depots. So you have suddenly, um, if you redeploy these vehicles, a large electric load. So um, in Germany, we, there's no way around it. You need to go in the in-fight with, uh, with the network operator. Um, we're building up actively now people who are like energy architects, yeah, I have a team of solution architects, I, we can become energy architects in order to understand um, how is the grid ready for it, what needs to be done on the net side to improve the grid. Um, I see software as a big enabler to limit the, um, the um, an investment or to, to lower the investment that you need to do in the grid uh, because sometimes uh, customers uh, come to us and say, okay, we want 20 electric vehicles. So each of these electric vehicles charges with AC 7 kilowatts. So so I need 70 kilowatts of uh, grid power, but that's not correct. We know that the vehicles are standing maybe 12 hours, but they can be charged in five hours. So by, 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 by intelligently splitting the loading, uh, the, the charging windows, time windows, you can um, actively maybe um, um, uh, totally avoid a network in the, um, improvement. <coughs> and now if you do it at a macroscopic scale, I think we need to come to energy grids that really take into um, account the demands and the supply side a lot better. So we need those intelligent grids that can even predict 
what, what load will be in the network at a certain time. Um, I, cities are not there yet, but I, I think, at least from the talks I'm having to network pro, um, operators or grid operators, they all understand the problem and are open uh, for collaboration. But you need to go to every city, to every country, and have the same discussions again and again. Regarding the second part of the questions, so uh, a commercial bean is not so much a lifestyle product, but nevertheless, the question is excellent. So um, our strategy at Mercedes-Benz Vans is to become a solution provider. We don't uh, want to sell uh, vans any longer, simply the van. We want to provide holistic transport solutions. And one example is that we, uh, this vision van that I showed, it has, in the back it has automated shelving systems. Now loading these shelves means that you have to go into the, the, um, the value chain of your customer and make certain that the goods that you load into the van come in the right sequence. So this is one example how we want to basically um, provide those solutions. And actually the, the customers are demanding it. They're saying, so, okay, I have the car, but what, what, what's more? You know, how can you improve my efficiency? So that's maybe the yeah, van part. Just to add two sentences and yeah. then we are done. Oh, sorry, I'm, I no, no, took a good. bit longer. Yeah. So, and uh, just to add two sentences, so yes, what the van colleagues are doing, and this is fitting into not a lifestyle uh, provider, as you said, but in a mobility solution provider at all. Because out of our product range, we are quite good in fulfilling personal mobility needs and also to fulfill the uh, needs on commercial sites and to combine that, of course, in a sophisticated picture um, that would, for example, an foreign, foreign, foreign state like Singapore be from great help because you have one um, partner that would be able to fulfill all mobility demands that you have on the ground space anyhow. Yeah? And that's a picture we have somehow in mind and that's what we are heading for step by step. All right. Thank you. We'll uh, wrap it up now because we have a panel. Thank you, Vlado and Ronald. So Thank you. It's going to be interesting to see the automotive companies uh, become software companies and embrace open source. So look forward to it. Thank you.